Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day, your daily stop for virtual reality content. My name is Dee, and today we have a very special new friend. Oculus Rift Development Kit 2, DK2 is here. I got this in the mail just yesterday. I picked it up at the UPS Center in its awesome new box. It's just an ordinary cardboard box, but I actually like it. It's very strong and stiff and has some good structure to it. And I recorded the unboxing process every little piece meticulously and i will show you that later when i have time to edit it properly right now i just want to jump right into using the oculus rift dk2 and exploring the demo scene that comes with the oculus configuration tool um, the demo scene is just a static table like this desk i have here like it's just a desk and it's got a, like a plant on it and a soda can and some other things like that just to give you a sense of scale and to try out the new features like the low persistence and the positional tracking it's a great scene and it, I, I think it really takes a page out of kind of daniel ernst's book of um, doing kind of simple dioramas uh, and and letting the user sit there and just chill in them and i am going to go ahead and jump into it and show you what it's all about let's go All right, here we are in the demo scene. So initially it just shows us this square in front of us and tells us to start. We can still look all around us. There's just nothing but a featureless blue plane all around us. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the start button. Um, before I jump into this, I want to remind you that there is a 60 frames per second version of this video available. There's not a lot of 60 frames per second recording of uh, of the Rift DK2 right now, so I think that's def that's definitely worth checking out if you want to see it at in its full glory. Uh, link is in the description. I am now sitting at a desk, and just to show you where my camera is, I decided to mount my camera off a little bit to the side. So that's where my camera is, right at the, the point of that cone at the other end of that red line. Um, normally the camera's mounted in front of you, but I can't mount it in front of me because that's where the camera that you are looking at me through is, uh, is mounted. So I have to put this camera somewhere else. So I put it just off to the side, kind of attached to the corner of my desk near the wall, about as far as I could get it from me and still have a clear view of me. And the frustrum extends quite a bit behind me. Um, especially on the left hand side, if I move a bit over this way, I will not be quite, so I'm pretty close to the frustrum on this side. On this side, I have a lot of leeway, just the way it's mounted right now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the camera bounds for a sec. And so I'm in the sitting position. If I hit stand, it will just, um, put my vertical height up higher as though I were standing. It's kind of weird because I still have a chair and it's like I'm standing even though the chair is in the way, whatever. And you can kind of see what it would be look look like if you were standing and looking down at the table. But I'm going to sit down. I'm going to hit recenter one more time. And let's go ahead and try out the positional tracking. So, hello plant. Look how I can look around each of these leaves. I can look at their underside and their top side. And this is this is just right out of the gate, this is absolutely amazing. Like, everything feels incredibly solid. Like, normally, if I were in a DK1 app and I did, like, this, the world would be, like, running away from me, and it would feel really disorienting. Like, the world was, like, there was an earthquake going on, and the world was just collapsing under me. But with this, it's like, well, there's a desk, and I lean down, and I look at the desk, and it, it's normal. And... The interesting thing is, like, when you look at it on your monitor, if you're watching this on a monitor, it really, um, like, you, you just feel like, like, it, uh, things are getting closer as I look down. But that's not exactly how I feel. I feel like this table is just sitting here, and it's static, and it's not moving, and I'm just moving my head around. I feel like my head is moving through a world, and the world is completely static, and that's the... That's really the amazing illusion that you get from the development kit too. And the way that I can just, I can look around at this card tower. I can lean in and look at the soda can. I have to be careful because if I like lean too far this way, I think I'll actually hit my monitor. Ow. Yeah, that's my monitor. It's kind of weird because if I put my hand up and I like 
reach this way. I can feel my monitor, but I don't see it. I'm like, what's this invisible wall here? This is so weird. But yeah, it's it's kind of like my, my sense of sight is telling me like there is no wall here. You can put your hand this way, but I can't. It's it's kind of weird. And let's see what's under the desk. Is there anything down here? Oh, looks like the cable of the lamp is down here. I can't quite see all the way under the desk. I start to go under my actual desk, and then the DK2 camera can no longer see me. So I have to be wary of that. Uh, this would work a little bit better if I had a more uh, larger open space. I might consider rearranging things at some point to facilitate that. And I love how I can lean right up to this tiny pencil and get a good view of it. And these individual cards, like if there was if there was text written on this paper, I would be able to like just lean down and clearly read the text on the paper, just like that. And this ruler looks exactly one foot long. Uh, Oculus is an American company. That's probably why they're using a foot ruler here. And the soda can looks like just a standard size soda can. Everything, the scale is absolutely perfect. And um, so I should start talking about some of the uh, slight negative things. So when I look up at the word Oculus VR up there, um, I see a little bit of chromatic aberration. I see... It depends exactly like what I'm doing. Like if I if I look up and the rift settles on my face like this, and it leans out a bit, then um, th a lot of the red goes away. So it depends exactly how it sits on my face. But when I'm like just looking ahead normally, um, there's a little red edge on top of the on the letters, and there's a little blue edge on the bottom of the letters. Um, and I might be able to compensate for this to some extent by just kind of adjusting my straps and fooling around with that stuff. Um, but right now, there is definitely a color fringe on those letters. And it's also on other objects, but it's less evident on the other objects. It's most apparent on bright white objects, like, like this paper and these cards, um, a little bit on the plant over there, um, but especially on those letters up in front of me. Um, and and I think they said that the chromatic aberration um, in the deke. So you guys are actually seeing a lot more chromatic aberration than I am inside the rift. If you're not familiar with how this works, um, it distorts the red, green, and blue channel each differently so that when they um, are rendered on the screen inside the rift and then they pass through the lens, each of the channels comes back together into a single image. So I see only a little bit of color fringing. You guys are going to see, like, you guys probably see, like, this mouse, like, turning into three colored mouses. That's not what it looks like to me. I just see, I just see one mouse. Um... Although when I when I move it towards the edge of the screen, it does separate a little bit. I I see it starting to separate. So the chromatic aberration correction, at least for me, at least with the way I'm wearing it right now, is not quite perfect. Um, it's it's a lot better than you're seeing it on your monitor, but it's not perfect. Um, I can actually in the demo scene see the um the famous um. Uh, pure black smearing effect where if I stare at this lamp incidentally this lamp like one of the downsides of a screen compared to real life is like I can stare directly into a lamp and it's not going to hurt my face and that's kind of weird actually um, and you know they probably are not going to make a screen that can actually hurt your face because that would probably be like illegal or something um, but it's it's kind of weird how if I look at my lamp in real life, I'm like, ow, that hurts my eyes. I'm going to look away from it. But here I'm, I can just sit here and stare at it. I'm like, huh, so so that's a light bulb. Yep, yep. Anyway, um, so notice the light bulb area is really bright and kind of the area around it's much darker. So if I move my head in a circle as I'm looking at the light bulb, I see this kind of shadow on the inside of the bright area. You guys can't see it, I don't think. Um... It's an artifact of the screen and how it works. And um, essentially, when the screen changes from a very bright color to a very dark color very quickly, um, it leaves behind this, um, or, or when it changes from a very dark color to a very bright color, rather, it, it leaves behind this kind of shadow. And it's especially apparent with areas that are um, of the minimum possible darkness at, at pure black. Um, and it's it's not a huge deal in this particular application. I might 
notice it more in other applications. But like I had to play this like I had to run this like five times before I even noticed that this was going on. So it's very subtle. And I have to move my head in exactly the right way when I'm looking at exactly the right part. Um, uh, mounting my camera was a bit tricky because you really want to get it like five feet away from you. But in a s relatively small room like I have here, that can be actually quite challenging. Um, so um, I had to, I ended up having to mount it kind of in the corner of my desk, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get the best experience from this because I can lean, you know, a lot farther to the left than I can to the right without exiting the frustrum. I also decided to point it down a bit because to get above the frustrum here, I have to actually push myself up, and that's not something I normally do a lot. So I decided to give myself more down room instead, which makes sense to me. I like a lot that the camera has this amazing flexibility that you can literally put it in any position, any orientation. My camera is actually hanging upside down right now, and, you know, DK2 software doesn't give a fuck. It's like, a, hang it any way you want. We'll figure it out. And it's constantly just recalibrating, figuring out, figuring out. You can kind of see the camera moving a little bit. I think it's just constantly recalibrating and figuring out exactly where in the scene the camera is and its orientation. And that's really cool because that means you can hang it on the ceiling. You can hang it, like, on the wall in front of you. You could probably turn it sideways if you wanted, like, maybe if you wanted to do standing VR, you could just kind of turn it sideways and that would give you more vertical and less horizontal. I don't know, but it's it's really flexible, really flexible. I really like that. Um, this was a bit of a pain to set up. So, um, I, one of the, the painful things about setting up this video was just doing the, um, the recording. So recording, um, the new Oculus uh, SDK adds this feature called direct mode. In direct mode, it writes directly to the wrist display. Um, and it doesn't, you don't have to like change modes like you did in DK1 to clone mode or to um, extended mode in Windows and treat the Rift screen as a monitor. You no longer have to do that. Instead, the Rift just turns off when you're not running a Rift application. And when you run a Rift application, it writes directly to the screen, which is how it should work. Um, unfortunately, the way it works, um, it just doesn't work with recording software right now. So I have to run it in extended mode as... Um, um, as part of my desktop, like I did with DK1, which is, you know, not a big deal for me because I did it with DK1. I'm used to it. Um, what I did notice, at least with this application, is that the CPU load seems to be quite a bit higher. I'm actually not able to, um, to run my uh, camera recording on the same PC anymore just because I don't have the CPU budget for it. And I'm not able to capture this application at the full 75 frames per second. I can only capture it at about 60 frames per second. And if I try to do more, it'll start to freak out. So, um, and, you know, that's probably okay anyway because my editing software only supports up to 60 frames a second. But it's, it's um, I'm, I'm not sure why it's that much more CPU intensive. Maybe it's just doing a lot of CPU intensive stuff with the camera. Um, but it's definitely more CPU intensive than DK1 was. And you're not normally going to notice that unless you're doing a lot of other uh, CPU activities on the same machine at the same time. And I think this is all I want to say about this demo. I really like this demo. Like, I, I feel like I could just like lean back and like the fact that I even can just like lean back in this chair and chill is amazing. And I can kind of just look at this stuff on this desk in front of me. And um, the low persistence is amazing. Like, low persistence is one of those things, like, like I had gotten used to moving my head like a bird in DK1. Like, in, in DK1, I had to quickly move my head and then stop it because I could only see clearly when my head was stopped. So I got used to doing like this. And so I, like, I, I wasn't really noticing the motion blur as much anymore because I had learned that behavior. Well, now I have to unlearn it because now I can gradually move my head and everything remains totally sharp and everything is fine the low persistence is working beautifully um, by the way if you have a dk2 you can uh, watch my 60 frames per second video in extended mode full screen and you will see exactly what i'm seeing at all times and that works beautifully um, it helps a lot that i can um, that the dk2 has 16 9 aspect ratio so i can just publish it um, directly to YouTube, and I don't have to crop it, I don't have to stretch it, it's, it's just exactly the same aspect ratio you, YouTube uses. That helps a lot. And um, 
and I mean this this low persistence, it really, really just works out of the box. Like I I don't see any blur no matter how much I move my head and the latency. Like DK1 had some amount of latency, but the latency here I cannot notice anything. Like I can move my head back and forth as much as I want between these two things. And I'm probably making you dizzy if you're watching this on your DK2, but like, no matter how many times I move it back and forth, no matter how fast I move it, there's no stuttering, there's no jumping, there's no blurring, there's no, there's there's just nothing. It just feels like I'm sitting at a desk. I'm like, huh, cards, plant, cards, plant, cards, plant. Totally natural, totally natural. And, you know, I, and, and the resolution is also amazing. Like, that text in previous versions of, of, of the config software had to be quite a bit, um, quite a bit larger just to be legible and i can i can see the detail on that pencil i can see the point of it really well and you know there there is a screen door but it's very subtle and it's very kind of soft and subdued and i don't have a problem with the screen door really um it's just it's just miles better than dk1 and you know there's there's a couple small issues like the the chromatic aberration and the and the true black smearing and you know they're they're working out fixes for these and i'm confident that they're going to make it better with future versions of the sdk um i i honestly am i am absolutely thrilled with dk2 it is it is a huge huge step up and like i mean there's there's I could talk all day about the individual features and how they add to the experience, like the low persistence and the positional tracking. But at the end of the day, what, what it gives you is something something holistic, something bigger than that, something that all those things come together to bring you, which is a feeling of solidness. This desk doesn't feel like a simulation. It doesn't feel like it's tracking my head as I move my head and updating the view. That's not how it feels to me. How it feels to me is that... I have a table in front of me. It is sitting there. It is fixed in space. It's not going anywhere. It's not moving. It's not updating. It's just there. And if I close my eyes, I feel like the desk is still there. And if I open my eyes, I feel like I see exactly what I expect to see. If I if I move around in the scene, I feel like it's my head that's moving, not the scene that's moving, not the display that's updating. I feel like it's my head that's moving. And that's that's really the key the thing that DK2 is trying to provide. And it does a brilliant, brilliant job of it. And, you know, that as long as you don't go outside the frustrum, because if you go outside the frustrum, things ah start to get a little uh, weird. But the frustrum's relatively large, and as long as you're just kind of tracking relatively small motions, and you're not like going all over the place like crazy. There's really no problem with going outside the frustrum, and that's really what it's it's for at at the end of the day. Like you know, being able to lean and stuff is cool, but what it's really for is just being able to track the small motions of your head, eliminate motion sickness, and give that feeling of solidity to the world that you didn't really have in DK1 because it would be constantly kind of kind of leaning all over the place as you made those small head movements anyway so this is all i want to say today about um about dk2 i will be back with the unboxing video where i took everything out of its box i will show you more applications they are coming out fast and strong people are porting their dk1 apps to the dk2 very quickly and um let me know any particular apps that you want to see if you have been keeping track of what's coming out for the DK2, and I will prioritize what my fans want to see. That's all for today, and everybody have a great every day.